Thank you, my friends, for coming and providing that music. That's wonderful. And I'll just warn you that I'm, I think that the uh, last couple times I've preached, I said that I'm gone off script and I'm already doing it. It's their fault. They got me all fired up there. But um, what a uh, blessing it is to uh, come together and uh, worship together with that kind of singing and that kind of praise. It puts us in the right state of mind uh, to praise our God, to praise our Savior. Um, and you know what? There is absolutely nothing wrong. In fact, there's something very right about getting excited while you're at church because we're here to celebrate, to praise God about the good news of the gospel. And the good news of the gospel is Jesus stepped down from his throne of glory. He stepped down. He came and he took on a humble position as a carpenter. He stepped down below the angels and he came to show us what kind of lives we should live. And what kind of lives should we live? We should live lives where we care for each other, where we love each other, where we'll go the extra mile for each other without even asking, without even with, well, I hope they'll help me. I know they'll help me because they are followers of God. Jesus said they will know you are my followers if you love each other. Now, you guys can throw tomatoes and stuff at me later, but I'm going to say what I'm going to say because I'm up here and the mic's on. But uh, Jesus didn't say they would know that you're my followers if you come to church on the Sabbath day. He didn't say that they'll know you are my fathers if you're vegetarian or vegan. I'm not saying there's anything with, wrong with any of that. We're all here, aren't we? We're all here on Sabbath. I'm not saying I don't believe in the Sabbath. I'm saying that is not where our salvation comes from. Our salvation comes from one name and one name alone, and that's the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior. That's it. Now, we talked about in Sabbath school of whether it's easy or hard or whatever, and I'll tell you what my opinion is. I'll tell you what I think that my Bible tells me is that it's easy. But it also tells us that we have a choice. It also tells us that we're going to have trouble in this world. It also tells us that we have choice. That it's one of the greatest gifts that God has given all of his creations is a choice. Look at Lucifer. Lucifer was created and brought into a perfect existence. And he chose to sin. Not only did he choose to sin, but God allowed him to stay in heaven for an extended period of time and kind of knock around the idea that maybe God is in this for himself. When in fact, Lucifer was kind of getting proud. He was happy that he was the number one angel, which he was. He was happy that he was adorned with every precious stone. That's why I'm wearing my rings today. It's not a sin to wear rings. It's a sin to think that that's where your beauty comes from. Your beauty comes from what? Coming to the throne confidently with every need, every desire, by loving God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and loving your neighbor above yourself. That is where your beauty comes from. The scripture actually doesn't say don't wear jewels, don't wear this, don't wear that. We say that. We let our traditions get in the way. Don't get mad at me. It says don't let that be where your beauty comes from. That's what it says when I read it anyway. So do whatever you want. It also tells you not to braid your hair and stuff like that if you're if you're, if, if you're interpreting it that way, and so a lot of you guys are in trouble because I see a lot of braided hair. But all it says is not let that be where your beauty comes from. We're talking about doors today. We're talking about God giving us choices. Oftentimes, and I'm not picking on the ladies here, it's just where I've heard it most often, is that we kind of get hung up on well, I'm waiting for God to tell me what to do. God tells us what to do very clearly. He says to, 
Love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul. He tells us to rejoice in everything. Be prayerful in all things because this is God's will for you. Pretty simple, really. That's, that's the direction. This is, what is God's will for my life? Well, that's what it is. But we get ourselves hung up and we stop our lives and we actually, dare I say, take the name of God in vain by putting our lives on hold, waiting for God. Well, God hasn't told me who to marry yet. I like Tony Campolo's version of that. He's one of my hero preachers that he says, when you date a Christian woman, you have to be careful because they break up with you in style. They tell you it's God's will. Well, how? It's kind of hard to argue with that. It's God's will, okay. Well, what about God was telling me it's our will that we're to be together? I don't know. Somebody's mixed up. And it's not me. <laughs> Doors. Another word for saying choices. We have multiple choice in our lives, and it's a gift that God has given us. We shouldn't abuse it. We shouldn't put it aside. We shouldn't take his name in vain by acting like he is going to. What is the word I was asking you about? You don't She's no help to me. This morning, she's no help to me. This morning, I got all dressed up for you. And she's over there. I'm going to get it for telling this story. She's over there taking her vitamins and her pills, and she got this big bunch in her hand. She, oh, into her mouth. Then she grabs her coffee, which, how many of you have trouble with your women listening to you and doing what you tell them? I said, stop taking your pills and, your, and all this stuff with coffee because your creamer and stuff, you need to take it with water. Well, there she is taking a big gulp of coffee, and I'm standing like, She's like right here, and I'm, you know, and all of a sudden I hear this. <laughs> and I like take four or five steps back, and when she finally gets things under control, no, when she finally gets things under control, she says, how could you? You saw me choking. I said, we've been married for 20-some years. I know what's going on. I've got my suit on. I've got to preach. I'm stepping back. You can up chuck all over the carpet and the bed and the, the dresser and whatever. But when I hear, <coughs> when we've talked about the pills thing, I'm going to step back. We have choices. Whether we're going to take our pills with water or coffee or what we're going to do. When I was a young man, when I was a teenager, I lived and breathed cars. Man, I loved them. I've had Novas, Camaros, Mustangs. I've had a city bus. I bought a city bus because why not have a city bus? I didn't do anything with it. I drove it around. I took it out to Hickman and drove it around in the Norris lot, and it was fun, and then I sold it to some church. They're cool. And uh, I have a brother here, Randy. He doesn't want me pointing him out. But I uh, once went and looked at his Nova that he had for sale when it was somebody else's. And uh, my mom wouldn't let me buy it. And still not quite over that. But uh, I was coming down the street. What street did, was that on? Do you remember this story, Randy? You do? And Benji and I were in my Nova. And Randy can be a poor influence. So here's the Nova. He's standing out in the yard of his mother and father-in-law, Sam and Josie, and he does this. Everyone know what that means? That means turn them over. And I'm like, yeah, we can do that. So we got on it out onto 56th Street, burning rubber and making a lot of noise. And that's fun. I couldn't see anything else but working on cars for my life. That was my life story. That was my passion. Getting up and preaching wasn't even on the radar. I would have never thought to go to the school for theology, religion. No. I was living. I had gasoline in my blood. I loved it. Loved the noise. One day I was drag racing down, one night I was drag racing down Highway 2 
69 Camaro, and I had the benefit of that his car was packed full, and I was ho going home alone, so I was by myself, and I mean, we were ripping through down Highway 2, and uh, all of a sudden, this car comes bouncing over the median and come around behind me, lights turn on, and I know. So I pull over, shut it down. He comes up to me, probably the most angry I've ever seen a police officer. If you're going to act like a juvenile, I'm going to treat you like one. Have your license and registration out when I get back. Goes over to the Camaro, talking to them. Come, and he was back there for a while. Comes back to me, and he says, are you going home? And I said, yeah. And he says, make sure you do. The guy in the Camaro wants to be a smart mouth. And he let me go. Fired it back up. Boom, 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 boom. And I still love it, but Shannon won't let me have a car like that because, <laughs> because they're carbureted and they stink. And they doesn't matter how good they look. They give me a headache. And, but uh, so anyway, women, I love them. I love you. <laughs> lived and breathed cars and I believe that God blessed me with that I think he put that passion into me I think he puts different passions into all of us because it's the spice of life started went graduated went out to Southeast Community College Milford took automotive technology became a master tech worked for a couple different shops in town opened my own shop Never thought that I would do anything else. And then as what, you know, when you're young, you think you know it all. You think you, you have life by the tail. You think that you have all the answers for exactly how every portion of your life is going to play out. And things changed. And I became a truck driver. And while I was truck driving, I company drove for three months. And then after that three months, I bought my own truck. And I drove for another 13 years and almost 2 million, I would say 2 million miles, but I know my brother's back there and he won't let me get away with that. Almost 2 million miles. <clears throat> and while I was doing that, for the first time in my life, of course I have gone to church my whole life. Uh, my parents were Adventists. I was raised Adventist. I listened to my Bible, friends, the stories, all that stuff. Went to sleep at night listening to the little tapes that we used to have and stuff and the dramatized Bible stories. I st still enjoy those. But for the first time in my life for myself, I started seeking God for myself. Out there in the truck by myself where I had time to read and man, he was coming on me powerful and I thought, I got to get into ministry. At the church I was going to at the time, I went to him and I said, man, I want involved. And I said, well, we got people to do that, you know. And so it wasn't their intent to turn me away, but they did. And I found Capital View, and I found Tony, and I found this wonderful place, man. I mean, these windows, and th this isn't why we're here, but this is a fabulous church. And I started my ministry here, and I became a deacon, I became an elder, and I started to preach. And I've preached down in Florida I've preached down in Kansas. I've preached here. And I think that God opened those doors. He opens and he closes. But while I was trucking, I think that Satan realized how serious I was getting about following God, about wanting to know the truth. I don't want to know tradition. I don't want to know the way that we mess things up. And I mess things up too. I'm not, I'm not being negative. I, I'm a critical person. I can be, and I don't, I don't want to be. Uh, but I believe that Satan has tried to kill me twice in my life, for sure, that I know of. Here's one example. This is my second truck that I bought. It's broken down there, but it's the best picture I could find because I wanted a before picture. That's in, in uh, Mount Vernon, Illinois, right, Brett? There we're, okay. And uh, I'm parked in a parking lot big and waiting for someone to come out and repair it. And not long after this, I had just got the truck paid for. And 
Next slide. That is a front-facing picture of that truck on Highway 2 uh, just out by Bennett. And that picture right there, flames come flying out of the right side of the truck. That is probably no more than five minutes after I'd got out of the truck. It was fully engulfed and burning to the ground. Next photo. That's the back side where the Bennett Fire Department is working on the truck trying to get the fire out because down in, uh, just down the road a little bit in, in um, uh, Nebraska City, I was, uh, I had filled up my fuel completely. So I had about 300 gallons of diesel on there to burn. Next photo. That's the truck after they got done putting it out. Uh, the back, the front of the reefer there, you can see up behind it, there was uh, steps and a fuel, the fuel tank back behind, you can see, looks more like a water trough at this point. Next photo. And uh, just go through them. I, you know, this is just, that's one of, that, that bar right there is a lock bar for load locking the uh, freight in the truck. And it, you have a hanger on the back of them and it falling down into the fuel tank there. Next slide. And uh, obviously it, the heat, the heat that came off of it had bent that trailer down to where it was bowed down in the center. I had a full load on that trailer. Next slide. Uh, that's a back view. Next slide. Yeah. That's the uh, fire department trying to keep the 50 gallons of fuel that's on the reefer tank from going up into flames. Is there any more or is that it? Okay, I think that's the last slide right there. Um, Satan is out to kill us. He wants us to, he, he, you know, the scripture tells us that he's going around like a roaring lion trying to find those that he can destroy. When we follow that path, when we follow the path to uh, follow Jesus. Um, you know, I've gotten back now to where I'm home with my family and it's nice. And I am in an opportunity where I think that God is bringing me into the ministry. He's brought me into the ministry. I just think that he may be bringing me into paid ministry where I can do it full time. It's just in the beginning stages, but it's direction. He is leading me through these open doors. I already am seeing the results of following this new lead. Everyone has advice on what pastors need to do and how pastors need to act, what they need to eat, what they need to watch, what they need to listen to. It surprised me that it started already, but it has. And we need to be careful with each other in the way that we present our beliefs. beliefs. Then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked, Why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? They don't wash their hands before they eat. How dare them? Jesus replied, And why do you break the commands of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, Honor your father and mother, and anyone who curses their father or mother is to be put to death. But you say that if anyone declares that what might have been used to help their father and mother is devoted to God, they are not to honor their father and mother with it. Thus you nullify the word of God for the sake of your traditions, you hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain, for their teachings are merely human rules. Jesus called the crowd to him and said, Listen and understand. What goes into someone's mouth does not defile them, but what comes out of their mouth, that is what defiles a man. Then the disciples came to him and asked, Do you know that the Pharisees were offended by your words? He replied, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be pulled up by the roots Leave them. They are blind guides. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall into the pit. 
I've been talking to many people, searching for the meaning of church, for the meaning of being involved in a spiritual relationship with our Creator and our Father. And like it was for me, sometimes these questions don't come to us until we become full adults and experience experiences that life throw at us. When we were young adults, we had the world by the tail. We knew everything and knew how to handle every situation. We were sure about that. We were surprised when life started throwing things at us that didn't go along with the plans that we've made. And so we start looking at, for answers. Why does death happen? Divorce, betrayal, depression, suicide. When you start asking these questions, you may start realizing why the church is changing and why it needs to change. God is leading us in the direction that we need to go. When you're faced with real hardship, some of the old arguments start to seem very petty. Like, is it lawful to ride your bike on Sabbath? Is it lawful to swim or should you just wade? Beef hot dogs are big franks only. Man, it's hilarious. And we wonder why people leave. Why we have upward to 30 families attending the Berean church here in Lincoln and it's a Sunday church. And I, I don't have a problem with them going over there. I'm just asking a question. I'm asking a question of why did that happen? And we worry about them because we've made the sal Sabbath a salvation issue. The Sabbath is not a salvation issue. It's not. Prove it to me in the Bible. It was given us as a blessing. Mark 2.23 has this to say about the Sabbath. One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and as his disciples walked along, they began to pick some heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look! Why are they doing what is unlawful to do on the Sabbath? He answered, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need in the days of Abathar, the high priest? He entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for the priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. If it was given to us, it was given to us as a break to stop from our daily work. We are to call it a delight and enter God's rest. And by the way, we experienced that today while we were singing, while we were praising, while we were praying. We were experiencing what it's like to call the Sabbath a delight. But because we have gone with tradition and made it a salvation issue, a what to do and what not to do, we're driving people out. And they're not wrong. We've been wrong. We have been defiling the blessing of the Sabbath. No one can call it a blessing when we're too busy constantly checking our policy on the Sabbath day and slamming the doors of heaven in people's faces. I've talked to some of those who are attending Berean. I have no problem with them being there as I've said, except for the question of why. I want them here. I want them here with us. I want to call the Sabbath a blessing and a day of rest. I believe in the Sabbath. Like I said before, we wouldn't be here together if I didn't. But it's a blessing, not a burden. Adventists are experts in the law. And I know what the Bible says. It says those at the end will be a commandment-keeping people. Revelations 14, 12 is talking about the end times. 
This calls for patient endurance on the part of the people of God who keep His commandments and remain faithful to Jesus until the end. All I'm saying is, is it possible? Is it possible that we've been misrepresenting that and mishandling that? Mishandling that text in the past? I believe the answer is yes. As I work through the Bible over and over, I see the, quality of God, of the qualities of God. His name is love. James 1, 9, 1, 19, starting at verse 19, I'm sorry. My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that's so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone looking in the mirror and then forgetting what they look like after they walk away. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Okay, so I was wrong. Maybe the Sabbath is a salvation issue. But it's not. This is the answer Jesus gives to the experts of the law who ask, what is the most important commandment in the law? Is it the Sabbath? Is it vegan? No, in fact, Scripture tells us people won't know that we are followers of God based on the food we eat, based on the day we go to church. People won't know we are followers of God based on the day we worship. John 13, 35 says, By this everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Period. What is the greatest commandment? What is the greatest commandment, the expert in the law asked Jesus. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, tested him with this question. Teacher, which is the greatest command in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor above yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two commandments. And these two commandments fulfill the ten. We have to make sure that when we go into a contract with God that we're fully in. I want to follow God, don't you? I want to follow God like that. See, I'm coming to the close here. I promised Josie that if I gave her time to uh, come up and speak, to honor her father, that I'd keep my sermon short, and I haven't done that. <laughs> it's fine. But here it is. When you go fully in with God, when you walk through that door, you better be ready because it's a wild ride. It's exciting. Satan's going to come after you. He's going to tear you apart. Jesus said, in this world you will have trouble. You'll have it. But take heart, I have overcome the world. That's good news. He, is the, he that is with us is more powerful and greater than the one that is against us. He, James says that when we have trouble in this world that we should praise God for it because it's causing us to grow. It's causing us to have patience and perseverance and it's leading us to salvation. So here's the story that Tony Campolo tells. It's one of my favorite ones. He went into a contract with God that he would go and preach at this small little church quite a ways from his house as long as he didn't have to buy tires for his car. So he went and did it, went and did it, went and did it, finally wore the tires out on his car, and he was thinking, yes, it's getting close, and I don't have to do this anymore because let's be honest, that's how we feel sometimes. We don't have to do it anymore. I've been doing it for years. It's someone else's turn. And as he, he says, if you think I'm bald, 
you should have seen these tires. But he pulls into the church, and as he's pulling in, God gets him there, by the way. One of the front tires goes flat. And he said he went in and preached the sermon of his life because he was so excited that it was over and he didn't have to preach there anymore. Well, while he was in there preaching, some of the deacons and elders saw that the good pastor was having car issues here. So they called a local shop that would come and do on-site repairs and had them put a set of four brand new tires on that car. He comes out and they were all proud of themselves. They'd done a good deed. Look, new tires. And he says, I just looked at him and I said, why don't you guys mind your own business? <laughs> when you walk through the door and you go into a contract with God, make sure you're fully in because he is going to take you to places that you never thought you'd go. He is going to teach you to love God with all your heart, all your mind and soul. And it is a journey but he's willing to take it with us. And he's going to teach you, and we're not perfect at this, but man, he's going to teach us to love each other above ourselves so that people will know that we are his followers.